All right, so chapter 18, Glencoe uh, Science, Matter and Change. We're going to be talking about acids and bases. You should have uh, some notes in your hand there uh, with some blanks on them. We're going to go through the notes. And uh, through these, uh, these lessons here, you get to fill in the notes. I'm going to ask you questions, going to answer questions. Also, I have uh, at the end of your notes package, I have also uh, the questions from the textbook uh, for you there to answer as we go along. So uh, if you're in my class here today, you're going to be required to hand in the note package along with the, uh, well, actually, you're just going to have, have to hand in your answers to the questions. I'm going to do some of them with you, but uh, that will be do you be able to rip those off the, the notes package. Okay, so acids and bases. All right, <clears throat> so we know a lot about acids and bases already. Uh, you may not realize, but if I were to ask you sort of what comes to your mind when you think of acids and bases, what would you say? Give me a few thoughts here. Acids, bases, Batteries. characteristics, types, examples. What do you got? Oh, thank you. Batteries, lemons, yeah, sure. You want to look at the screen and just name everything? Okay. So what do those have to do with acids and bases? Uh, has acids in them. Okay. So the batteries, lemons, this looks like uh, cola, tomatoes. You think this is, you think these are all acids? I think there's some bases in there. You think there's some bases in there? Okay. Um, let's hear from someone else. What do you guys think? Um, pH levels. Can okay, you think of pH levels? Okay. What do you know about pH levels? Acids on the lower end, bases are on the higher end. Okay, I like that. Let's go back to the pictures here. So we've got baking soda, looks like toothpaste, and we've got some uh, industrial cleaning solution here. So if we were to separate these, and I think these are separated, sorry that they aren't all mixed up, I don't think I agree with you on that one, but if they were separated, do you think the top would be acids or the top would be bases? <clears throat> bases on top and then acids on the bottom you think okay <laughs> yes that is correct bases on top acids on the bottom okay so you think of lemons right you know what they taste like uh, uh, you know cola maybe is a little bit uh, different tomatoes okay so citric acid uh, battery acid right um, you know, there's all sorts of acidic things like that, so acids. And bases are generally cleaners, like even bleach, right? Uh, you put in your laundry to bleach your whites or whatever. So uh, strong bases, so cleaners uh, are, are, are bases. Okay. Okay, so that's good. So yeah, pH scale was mentioned. So here's the pH scale, just a little uh, diagram. So that's a little tough to read probably for you at the bottom there. But um, absolutely correct. Uh, the lower end of the pH scale is... Uh, would be where the acidic things would measure in pH. Neutral is around 7, and alkaline or basic would be on the upper end. So notice that the scale goes from 0 to 14. We're going to explain why that is a little bit later. Neutral would be halfway between, so a pH of 7 would be something that's completely neutral. It's not neither acidic nor basic. So pure distilled water that we have in the lab that we've used for our different labs and things like that, that would be about a pH of 7. So human blood, slightly basic, pH of about 7.4. Uh, hand soap, household bleach starts to get up in the higher pH uh, regions. So human urine, thanks for putting that up there. Uh, pH of 5, okay, slightly acidic. Tomato juice, pH 4. Gastric juices or stomach acid would be pH 2. And uh, some of the the high concentration 12 molar HCl that we use in the lab would also be uh, very, very acidic down here right near the bottom. You can what? You can melt in human blood. Mm, uh, no, because something slightly acidic doesn't mean you'll melt. Since you have human blood flowing through your veins right now and you're not melting. But, but okay, all right. If you were to jump in a vat of human blood, would you feel a little uncomfortable? Yes. Would it be gross? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, if you want to turn to page 634, if you aren't there already, 634, 635, that's where we uh, start this introduction to acids and bases in your textbook. And uh, here's, here's some notes uh, from there and just from some, some uh, obvious uh, and uh, uh, you know, characteristics of acids and bases. So. For your notes, you'll want to fill in the blanks that you have in front of you there. Acids taste sour. Okay, I'll maybe highlight some of these blanks again for you. I don't have these ones highlighted. So, taste sour. 
Okay, if you have a, a sour tasting thing, that's probably from uh, acid. Citric acid is the acid in fruits, <clears throat> and they have sort of a tart taste to them. Uh, acids can dissolve metals and other things. Uh, turns blue litmus paper red. So acid turns litmus paper red. Blue turns red. Red would be connected with acid, and you'll see later on that blue red turning blue would be attached to bases. That's maybe an easier one to remember. Um, acids also produce hydrogen ions in solution. Okay, that's really important and we're gonna talk a lot about that, especially when we get into pH and things like that. The hydrogen ion, or as we'll learn in a, in a bit, the hydronium ion, which is uh, uh, sort of an extension of this, we'll talk about that. But the measure of the hydrogen ions uh, free in solution would be the measure of acidity. Uh, that's where the pH scale comes from, the concentration of H plus ions. All right, let's talk about bases. Bases taste bitter. They taste bitter as opposed to sour. And if you're anything like me, I am horrible at distinguishing taste. Absolutely horrible. Every time I go to the dentist for a cleaning, you know, and they, they do the fluoride, you know, the trays and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I, I actually have a little game going with my dental hygienist uh, there and. Uh, I am so bad at this. I'm so bad at, at tasting things that uh, she says, so what flavor do you want? She lists them off. I'm like, listen, I, I don't, I probably won't be able to tell. And actually the last number of times I said, just give me, just give me a random one and I'll try and guess what it is. Okay. And this is the game we play and I get things so wrong most of the time. It's not like she just laughs at me. So if, if you're having trouble trying to think right now, like what's the difference between something tasting sour and something tasting bitter? You're not alone. I'm there too. Okay, but uh, you know those those sour sort of uh, candies. You know those candies with the with the uh, looks like the sugar all over the outside and kind of the sour ones. You know, it kind of kind of makes your your cheeks kind of squish in like you're a fish or whatever. And you're just like, mm, mm, oh, you feel that kind of near the sides of your tongue and it kind of like bites you there. So it'd be sour and bitter would be just kind of gross. Anyways, so think about tasting bleach. Don't do it, but think about it. That's kind of what it would taste like. So bases are used in cleaners like bleach, I mentioned before. Produces what? OH ions, OH negative ions. That's hydroxide ions in solution. So here's, here is our, our big difference right here, you'll see. And that's what we're going to be exploring a lot here in this unit. The difference between these ions that are produced in solution because of acids and bases. Uh, turns red litmus paper blue. So as I mentioned before, think about uh, litmus paper, which is basically colored paper, and when you uh, dip it in an acid or base, it will change colors accordingly. But the red paper, if you put it in acid, it won't change color, but if you put it in base, it'll change to blue, and then it'll be vice versa for the blue litmus paper. All right. Um, we, we may or may not use litmus paper in our in our labs. We have other indicators. Uh, I don't know if we'll be using in, uh, litmus paper, but um, it's kind of a one of those basic characteristics. So uh, disintegrates dyes. Okay, disintegrates dyes. So if you have like, um, if you put bleach in your laundry and uh, you happen to put your jeans in there or some shirts in there, or, or if you're working in the dish pit at camp and they've got, you know, anybody been there? Got that big uh, big sink full of, of bleach. You're supposed to dip the, uh, the, uh, the dishes in there. Um, if you get that splashed on you, which I have many times, if that bleach water ends up splashing on you at all, you have these little brown spots uh, where the bleach totally disintegrates the dye in your shirt. So, um, does anyone work to camp in the dish pit? Know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no? Really? No one's answering. Okay. All right. Okay, so there are some theories on acids and bases. Um, how do you describe them? Um, what sort of categories? Uh, what, what's actually happening? to distinguish between these substances that are called acids and bases. And on page 637, if you want to look there, um, your textbook talks about the Arrhenius theory. Arrhenius. Substances that conduct electricity are called electrolytes. Oh, I should have mentioned this too, that both conduct electricity. This is due to electrons passing easily through ions in solution. So his theory has stated that acids release H plus ions in solution. So going back to your blanks there, um, conductless recalled electrolytes is one you want to fill in your blank. This is due to 
electrons passing easily through ions in solution. So remember, the flow of electricity is the flow of electrons. So if you have electrons that are trapped in some kind of network solid or something, there's going to be a good insulator. If electrons are delocalized, such as in pure, uh, pure, um, some pure metals or things like that, or if uh, there are ions floating around in solution that are able to sort of transport these electrons easily, then electricity will be conducted. So um, Arrhenius is a, yeah, he's actually named after a guy there. So Arrhenius, his theory stated that acids release hydrogen ions in solution and that bases release uh, hydroxide ions or OH minus ions in solution. He believed that these ions came from the acid and the base respectively. Okay, so this is the first theory I identified the H plus ions, the OH minus ions and clearly if you have some substance uh, like HCl, let's say that's very acidic then uh, th that's going to dissociate, right? We've talked about the solubility and dissociation and uh, dissolving and into ions and stuff. And so you have a lot of H plus ions floating around. That's, that uh, solution is clearly acidic. If you have a very strong base like sodium hydroxide, it's one of the more popular, very strong bases. It's got Na and it's got the OH ion. You put that in solution, there's lots of Na plus ions and lots of OH minus ions. It's a base. Boom. Done. But why do we have another theory that we need to study? Because Bronsted and Lowry changed the definitions of acids and bases. So we started off with the Arrhenius theory, but they ran into some problems and had to readjust the, the, uh, the theory, re readjust the model. Their definition stated that acids are proton donors. So for your blanks, their definition states acids are um, proton donors proton donors and bases are proton acceptors okay well that's interesting that doesn't have much to do with um, well it has a little bit to do with H plus ions if you think about an H plus ion hydrogen is number one on your periodic table there uh, and and its uh, average atomic mass is 1.00794 which is roughly equal to one right and so if hydrogen has um, one proton in its nucleus and one electron which is virtually massless, you take that electron away, uh, you, you basically have a single proton. There's no neutron. The, the weight is not two atomic mass units or two moles per, per uh, grams per mole. It's only one. So really the hydrogen ion, if you take the electron away, is literally just a proton. So the hydrogen ion, you know, theory, it's not much different when we're talking about acids uh, dealing with protons. However, acids in this theory are seen as proton donors. So you have some kind of um, uh, substance, some kind of compound that is going to actually give its its proton, which is like an H plus, to something else. It's going to give that away. Okay. And bases, instead of, now this is the big thing right here, instead of producing hydrogen uh, hydroxide ions in solution, they actually accept protons. That's the big difference. That's the big difference, okay? So we do need to remember that the hydrogen ion is really just a proton, as I mentioned. That's in your notes, you can fill that blank in. Uh, <clears throat> so this part of the theory is the same as uh, Arrhenius. His, this theory came about because there were bases discovered that did not have the OH minus ion, and that is really important. So they did not have the OH minus ion. And so ob the obvious question was how, if bases are supposed to produce OH minus ions and we have substances that produce a basic solution but do not themselves have OH minus ions, we have a problem. So NH3 is the obvious one. Uh, H2O could be argued, yeah, you do have OH minus in there, so I don't know why that one's in there. but. Uh, NH, but, but it's not a clear, a clear ion, right? It, it, it's, it's part of a more covalent uh, compound. Anyways, NH3 is the big one. NH3 is the big one because how, where's the O in here? It's gone. So <clears throat> what we have is we have something interesting happening and this is where the H plus ion is probably a little better understood to be actually a hydronium ion. So a couple things here. HCl we know is a strong acid. So I'm not sure how your notes exactly look here, uh, but I'm going to draw a little arrow from 
the acid to the HCl. That's the acid. The, oh, I do know how your notes look. I have a copy right here. Base. The base is the H2O. Okay. So here water is acting like a base. Now, what you want to notice here is that the ion, or the uh, acid here, HCl, is going to, you know, dissolve in water and it's going to release H plus ions, which is really just a proton or protons. And the reason why we don't really do this, okay, H plus, plus Cl, that's one way to look at it. But in reality, what happens is a better explanation says that this H plus is not just released and to be free, but it is released to be donated. And it is actually donated to the water molecule. And that produces this called the hydronium ion. Pretty sure you haven't heard about the hydronium ion before. We're going to be talking a lot about that uh, using, using that, uh, those, that word for sure. So donates the proton to water molecule becoming hydronium. So H3O plus is virtually the same as just the H plus ion. It's kind of, you can view it to be the same, but it's in reality, this is, this follows the Bronsted Lowry theory, which is, uh, you know, more of the, uh, it's a better, it's a little bit better theory. So we do have then the chloride ion is also just floating around in solution here. Okay. So here's the big thing, hydronium ion. That's, that's huge. Uh, that's kind of new for you. How are we doing? Anybody have any questions here so far with anything we've talked about? Okay, so in reality, as I mentioned here, uh, acids produce the hydronium ion in solution. So acid needs to be aqueous, uh, and and as far as as far as the states of matter here, when you see acids like this, they have to be aq aqueous. That's what this means. That means dissolved in water. So for our most of our uh, chemical equations now, we're going to have uh, it looking like this. Okay, bases being proton acceptors might have an equation that looks like this. So let's, let's focus on this NH3, right? Which clearly does not have, uh, it does not have an OH to give, right? So according to the acid theory, the base does not give up an OH minus ion. Instead, look what happens. The H, one of the H's in the water molecule actually donates a proton, so the H actually attaches to the NH3. Remember, a base in the uh, Bronsted-Lowry theory is a proton acceptor, so NH3 becomes NH4. Here's the base, and water is now the acid. And it's donating uh, a hydrogen. So what happens there? We have NH4, but look what happens when you have, uh, you have an H, and you have an O, and you have an H in the water molecule. If you get rid of an H, you now have an OH minus. So in reality, the OH minus ions still are the big deal when it comes to bases, but it's not the base compound that's providing the OH. Instead, it's ripping a hydrogen off the water molecules that are around it, and the water mo molecules are producing the OH ion, okay? All right, now though that's, that flies in the face of Arrhenius, right? Because he, he kind of thought, okay, well we have NaOH, no problem. That's going to be Na plus and OH minus, boom, there you go. That makes it a base. But with NH3, that's the problem. And so this is really uh, what they figure happens. Okay, any questions about that? Now you may have noticed, and I, I think these are in the, the uh, notes a bit later, but you may have noticed a couple things. One thing is this, that high, uh, water, H2O, can act as a base or can act as an acid. Depends on what, what else is around it. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's a word for that. Anyone know just offhand what that word is for water's ability to, to act both like a base and an acid? Anybody offhand? Did you read, the, uh, did you read chapter 18 on last night? Anybody go through it? Anybody remember? No? Okay. It's going to come up. Uh, you will be able to find that pretty easily if you haven't already. And I think it's going to come up in the uh, notes here pretty quick. So, so let's keep going. All right. Conjugate acids and conjugate bases. Okay. So what are these? What are we talking about? What's this conjugate word? Well, if any of you have been through any of my math classes, um, which most of you, actually all of you have, I think, uh, you may or may not remember what a conjugate is. Okay. So in math, 
And isn't it great we get to talk about math and chemistry? Awesome. So if you have something like x plus 2, right, the conjugate would be what? Who remembers? Shout it out. No? Thank you, x minus 2. Yes. All right. Boy, you guys are sleepy this morning or what? Oh, I see some, I see some heavy eyelids over there. Okay. <clears throat> Conjugate. So it's the same terms, but different sign there. And it's usually for, usually for, uh, for binomials, right? So that's what, that's what we call a conjugate in math. So the term conjugate is very similar. So it's, it's the same but opposite. Okay, it's the same but opposite. Think about that. Conjugate acids and conjugate bases are the particles that remain after the base has accepted a proton or after the acid has donated one. So it's kind of the same species but opposite. It's not a base anymore, it becomes an, a conjugate acid. Or it's not a base anymore, it becomes, or so not an acid anymore, it becomes a conjugate base. So let's see. Um, what do you have for blanks? Particles that remain, that should be a word, just fill in the blank there, after base has accepted a proton or acid has donated one. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> check this out now. In this situation, and we can see now, and let me zoom in here for you. We can see now that HCl plus H2O produces hydronium ion plus the chloride ion. I'm just gonna get rid of that red squiggly line. And so we know by looking at each of these, okay, the HCl, what has it become? Well, through this process, the HCl has become the Cl minus. So if this is the acid right here, after it's been split up and the, the hydrogen goes over here to the water, what is this, what remains? What remains is this right here. So the Cl minus is the conjugate base, okay? The, the water here was the base. And because it's accepted the ion, it, it, uh, the proton, it's, it's the base. And what has it become? After accepting a proton, it's become the hydronium ion. So this is the conjugate acid. Okay. So, so just for clarification there, and we'll, we'll run over a few more examples here, but the acid becomes the conjugate base and the base becomes the conjugate acid. Acid becomes the conjugate base, and the base becomes the conjugate acid. So how do we know that? What does that even mean? Well, if the reverse reaction occurs, then the conjugate acid would act like the acid, and it would donate back a proton. So an example, I think I have this. Do I have this in your notes or no? No, maybe not. I do not have this uh, diagram in your notes right here. But we're going to take a look at this. Now, obviously, this is a very strong acid. So this is more of a, I mean, there is a bit of a reverse reaction here. Like, it's a, it's, it, it will come into equilibrium. But HCl is so strong, it pretty much fully dissociates, right? Uh, so these don't really, it, the reverse reaction is very, very slight. So let's take a look at another example. It's from your textbook. If you had something like HF, and of course, HF is a pretty strong acid too, but, but here where we have a clear uh, equilibrium situation. So if you have HF um, in water, then what happens is the H ion would donate to the water to become hydronium ion. The F would be uh, left over. So here we have acid, base, and this is the conjugate what? Well, the base has become the conjugate acid and the acid has become now the conjugate base and just just further to this point here if we're talking about the reverse reaction only if we consider that then check out how h3o plus will now donate it will donate a proton to fluorine that's why it's an acid now it'll be pretty weak this is not going to happen very readily um, that's what you know it it's it's what the it's what the base becomes and if it were to go backwards it would then donate the proton and it would be the acid 
the F minus would accept the proton, therefore being a base. Okay? So that's why it's called a conjugate acid and conjugate base, because in the reverse direction, okay, the same but opposite, conjugate, they act like acids and bases respectively. Okay. Any questions about that? All right. Uh, what you do want to remember is that acids um, pretty much all the time will have an ionizable hydrogen. So there will be an H in there that will be able to come off to donate to the water. So when we're talking about acids, you're looking for that. Bases sometimes have OH minus, sometimes they, they don't, but uh, acids will, you can always look for that H that's going to be ionizable. Okay? All right, uh, so page 641 has this chart of uh, common acids. And um, so you should memorize as many of these as possible. Okay? Make that a goal this, this week to try and memorize uh, as many of these substances as possible. The conjugate base, I wouldn't focus on memorizing these, but if I gave you HCl, you should know that that's hydrochloric acid. This one we haven't talked much about, HNO3. Uh, think about NO3 as nitrate. So this is nitric acid, okay? Hydrofluoric, we're gonna talk about naming these uh, here real soon. This is hydrocyanic. It's the cyanide ion, so put an H in there, hydrocyanic acid. This right here is acetic acid in vinegar. Uh, this is phosphate ion, so this is called phosphoric acid, and so on. Um, carbonate ion with, with uh, H's on there is carbonic acid. You'll notice the X at the end of a lot of these and so on. Okay, and I just, ha I just clipped this from the textbook as well. This doesn't name uh, common bases, but some of the strongest bases all do have OH on them, so many of the common strong bases do have uh, hydroxide ion. And obviously this would be sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium, cesium, calcium, barium, hydroxide, okay? So there's some strong bases with the hydroxides. Okay, 642, if you want to check out 642 in your text here. Uh, there's a little table at the bottom that summarizes the uh, two theories and actually there is a third period We're not going to focus on here much You can understand that the Lewis theory would have something to do with electrons electron pairs We're not going to focus on that one here um, uh, right now, but this uh, chart is good to compare the, uh, the the two main ones that we are studying for sure so Arrhenius remember Arrhenius says that uh, acids are H plus producers and bases are OH minus producers. And uh, Bronsted-Lowry, instead of saying it's a producer, it's a donor. It donates to the base. And instead of the base being an OH minus producer, it's a proton acceptor. So just make sure you have those two um, you know, uh, clear. Make sure you, you know the differences between those two. OK, you guys are doing great so far. Any questions? Okay, um, there's now some time for some questions for you. I've got four questions outlined uh, from your textbook. So these will be on page 640 and 643. I'll give you a, I'll give you a start on some of them and then I'm gonna let you work on them and see how far, uh, uh, see how far you can get here in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. So number three on page 640, let's start off with this. It says, identify the conjugate acid base pairs in each reaction. Okay, so, <clears throat> Uh, for 3A, now you, you won't, I don't want you to really be obviously circling things in your textbook or doing like that. So for 3A, you might uh, just in your notebook, you know, just identify here. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the reactants first and then the products and identify the conjugates. So the conjugates are going to be on the right side. Okay, the conjugates are going to be... Okay, so we want to look at the right side, and the left side is sort of the, the starting position. I know this is a reverse, so always look at the left side for the acid and base, the right side for the conjugate acid and conjugate base pairs, okay? So if you're looking for conjugate, it's kind of what gets produced kind of secondary. So you do want to start with whatever's on the left. These are, so one of these is going to be the acid. Looks like NH4 is going to donate this proton to the OH minus, right? This is going to be the acid, 
it's going to become this. So the acid becomes what? The conjugate base. So NH3 is conjugate base. And H2O then, so OH, once it's accepted, a proton becomes H2O. So the base becomes the conjugate acid. Now if you want to put this in a table, go ahead. It'll cut down on some time for you. Um, and then of course uh, B, this one's pretty easy, HBr, that's a pretty strong acid we know. So does HBr give up its proton to water? Yeah, it does. See, HBr is the acid, so Br minus is the conjugate, conjugate base. And we have H2O is the, or sorry, H3O plus, sorry, H Three O plus is the conjugate acid. It's a good idea to look for the uh, to look for the extra hydrogens too. Like this is a plus. Okay, we got an extra hydrogen there. That's probably going to go. This hydrogen is probably going to go. Um, this one doesn't have a hydrogen to go in C. This here's the hydrogen that's going to go. So this is the acid. This is the base. Right? Because because uh, CO three two minus is going to accept a hydrogen. So this is going to be the base acid. Right? And then conjugate, uh, conjugate acid, conjugate base. So you can finish three. Uh, number four um, challenges you to write your own equation, the products uh, of which are H3O plus, that's hydronium ion, and sulfate 2 minus ion. So you want to think a lot about very similar to, to C here. Write the balanced equation for the reaction, identify the conjugate acid base pair. So I'm going to give you some time to work on that. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, work on 3, 4, also work on 7 and 9, which is how the, explain how the concentrations of hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions, determine whether a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. Okay, so from what we learned in the, the, the lesson today. And identify the conjugate acid base pairs in the following equation here. And that'll be our lesson, uh, our, our first lesson in the acid base unit here. Okay, so we're working on 3, 4, a uh, seven and nine from your textbook there. All right, so uh, just to, uh, you've had a chance to work through these. Let's go over the solutions here to three, four, uh, seven and nine. So we, we did uh, three, uh, three A and B together. Uh, here's the chart that I was speaking of that might make little things, uh, things a bit easier and simpler to outline your, outline your answers, Frozen. Thank you. So, <clears throat> yeah, take a look at the left side. This is going to be where your acid and base resides. On the right side is going to be the conjugate acid, conjugate base. So we went through A and B. C here, um, yeah, CO3 2 minus is going to accept this hydrogen. So if it's accepting, uh, that means it's a base right here. And this is the acid, o H2O is the acid. So what does the base become? Well, it becomes the conjugate acid right here. And this is the conjugate base. Uh, so the answer to four here, uh, you're basically uh, constructing a balanced equation. Uh, so if we have H3O plus on the right side, we has, have SO42 minus sulfate ion on the right side. So basically work backwards here. This H is going to be donated over here. So we're going to have an H, SO41 minus over here. And this is going to become H2O. All right. So uh, conjugate acid base pairs, so the reactant base is uh, H2O, and, and I guess they've, uh, they've identified reactant base here, that's interesting, uh, seeing as I guess they technically started with these, right? So um, anyways, the base on the reactant side would be H2O, and the acid on the reactant side would be HSO4 minus, and then uh, conjugate bases and acids are listed there. Any questions about three or four? Okay, moving on to number seven, how, uh, explain how the concentrations of hyd hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions, determine whether a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. So um, we talked a little bit about this at the very beginning, uh, not a whole ton, but it's the H plus ions that make something acidic. So assuming that there's going to be a little bit of both in there, just from water, uh, water automatically dissociates a little bit. So if there's an excess of hydrogen ions, uh, that is the concentration of hydrogen ions is greater than the concentration of OH minus. That's acidic. In a neutral solution, the concentration of H plus and the concentration of hydroxide ions are equal. 
And in a basic solution, because it's the OH minus ions that are the big deal indicating a base solution, well, we have the OH minus ions are greater uh, in concentration than the H plus, so however you write that. So that's, that's kind of how it shakes out. More hydrogen ion concentration, it's acidic. More hydroxide ion concentration, it's basic. Okay, any questions about seven? And finally, number nine, identify conjugate acid base pairs here. Uh, well, it looks like HNO2 is giving uh, away this uh, proton, or the hydrogen there. So that's going to be the acid. Uh, the H2O is going to be the base. That's going to accept the proton. And so um, what this becomes is NO2 minus, and that's going to be your conjugate base. And this is your conjugate acid. So that's nine. Any questions about number nine? All right, so there's your, there's your first introduction to acids, bases. Uh, we also talked about, uh, you know, we talked about the theories. We talked about common characteristics. We talked about conjugate uh, acids and bases. We talked about the hydronium ion, which is a little bit new. And uh, again, here's this chart. Please memorize uh, as many of these acids and bases as you can so you're familiar with those. Know the difference between the theories and be able to do, yeah, these things that we were asked to do in these questions.